Hey Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast and right on time at 1.30 on a beautiful <laughs> Thursday here in the Windy City. Luke Stuckmeyer, Ryan Herrera, Corey Friedman, the national champion, and Cody Del Mendo wearing my favorite pair of Jordans, his blue blacks. Highs. The blue blacks. These do bang. Slap. I'd say they slap more than they bang, <laughs> but yeah. Bang, Either way, whatever. All the all the good words. These are my. These are becoming my favorites. Yes. So we got a lot to talk mm-hmm. about today. I am going to skip and ignore the fact that the White Sox are talking about trying to build another stadium. And uh, let me just. I'll just say this. This is the only thing I'm going to say. We ain't paying for it. Okay. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't live in the city anymore. Either. State hmm. of Illinois paid for the last one. Oh, what did they? Yeah, yeah. That, that's who owns it. Uh oh. State of Illinois. Free uh, ballpark. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, that's yeah. news. Oh yeah. But the but the fire there. At the anyway, so knowing Jerry, he's gonna get make us all pay for it. Yeah, Corey is live. Sean, Corey is live. I haven't seen Sean here in a while on the live YouTube chat. Best way to enjoy the CHGO experience: make I sure can. you subscribe to the CHGO Sports yeah. YouTube page. And by the way, it's sign Sean, up to be a diehard, huh? Yeah, Sean, Sean, get the diehards rolling. You said it's 24. been a while since Sean's been in here. I think it's because he hasn't had <laughs> an opportunity to call me Lil Ross in a few months. <laughs> That's right. It's it's been a while. We have to wait until Ryan is vehemently, uh, you know, just espousing the, like, quotes from Craig Council. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hold on. I'm, uh, I'm and then Sean will get what back in What a spin it would be will, if, like, Ryan becomes, like, the very critical guy. He hates guy Craig Council. He hates <laughs> Craig Council. Like, he becomes, yeah. like, the Joe Cowley. He just bashes Council. <laughs> yeah, he'll be like Joe Cowley, no. who uh, bashed Derrick Rose, like, his entire career. David no. Ross wouldn't have lost that Joe game. Ryan that guy. CHGO. Well, yeah. The, uh, the Cubs will have a bad loss. I'll come into the chat and literally repeat what Craig Council said after the game, and then Sean will call me Lil Counts. Like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So I still I'm, say I'm like, it. like what? Low Craig. I think whenever he got, <laughs> when, he, when he got hired, I think on the reaction show, I think I said something like over under two days. Someone says to fire council if there's a bad loss in those two days. Oh, that'll be after the first loss. Because they got to play Texas loss. the first series of the World we'll Series champions. Yeah. Like there, there will be a game in there that they lose probably in those first two games, <laughs> where. Someone, someone will have the audacity to just say it. David Ross wouldn't have lost that game. Let me tell you something. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor Rossi. Anyways, uh, we're going to talk <laughs> about disrespect for Nico, second straight day. We're going to talk about respect for Seiya Suzuki. And we're wondering which Cubs prospect might impact this 24 season more than the others. We'll let uh, you weigh in on that. But off the top is the Buster only tweet i guess where where buster says the cubs are the team to watch high ranking evaluator tells them they think the cubs are going to make the most impactful moves the rest of the off season so i say to you is the second half going to be owned by the cubs the second half of the off season here's the first thing i thought of when he said it which is great i hope it happens but Keep in mind, some teams have spent like a billion dollars. I wouldn't expect them to own the second yeah, half of this okay. offseason. Uh, I think Nightingale actually had said something similar to this a few days back that GMs or front office folk had kind of said the same thing. But, um, no, I think the Cubs have obviously kind of waited and been patient this offseason. And, I mean, I guess it depends. Do you, like, would we consider the Imanaga signing in that as well since it happened after January or after January started, you know? Sure. The new year. Yeah. Uh, the Michael Bush trade. Um, and then what they can do in the free agent market still when you have – you talk about Cody Bellinger. I still think the Cubs are in a great position to sign Bellinger. Uh, I've seen something recently. Someone – I don't remember where uh, who wrote it or tweeted it or whatever, but that um, – the expectation is that the Boris clients won't sign until after February 1st, uh, or they won't sign before February 1st, something like that. So they're still waiting time to go. Um, 
but yeah, no, they're in a great position to sign Cody Bellinger, I think, uh, just based on, you know, his experience here last year, their experience with him and, you know, who, kind of who's left in the running, I would say, mm-hmm. who, who still needs someone like Cody Bellinger. Um, but even if not, you know, Matt Chapman's there somewhere, like he, he could possibly fit on this team. So, I, yeah, I do think the Cubs have positioned themselves to, you know, win the rest of the offseason, so to speak. Would obviously people in our chat have liked it to have come earlier? Would they have liked them to win the first half? Yes. Of course, but uh, there's still plenty of opportunities for this team to to get a big name, to fill out the roster with impactful pieces, and you know go into spring training or opening day with a much better roster than you know kind of what it looked like it was going to be a month ago. Or two weeks ago. Sure you, know that, so. you know that meme of the football player who's like, they had us in the first half? Yeah. Yeah, that's – maybe that's the that's the gif we tweet after they sign all these dudes or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Like, um, this is just more rumor talk that we've well, heard Well, and, like, we've heard season. this, too. Right. Like, that they were – I think at the beginning they were going to be one of the most mm-hmm. aggressive. So, like, I, yeah. as we've said, like, the path is there. I'm hoping we see it, but we, we have heard something similar a few times. So, like – at some point, everybody's just waiting for them to actually do it. It's nice that people think that, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, they, even though they, they have, like you, you guys said on the Friday show, like, or you said it, I think, something along the line of they now have, like, a solid base to the, uh, to the start of the offseason that happened that's, that's seemingly gone so slow. But obviously, they, they still need to do more to make this team even I mean, competitive in the division. As I, long as, you know, the way Jed put it at the convention, you know, they're in the fourth or fifth inning. Like, yeah. as long as that's true, great. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if they're, yeah. if they're not, actually, then, yeah, that's a problem. Right. So, you know, I, I'm he, not trying to be, like, negative about it. I, I think that they're going to get these things done. I've been, see say, yeah. I've been saying it all offseason that Bellinger is going to be here. I said that he was going to be in January. We're about halfway through the month of January, so we got about 10, 15 days or whatever to, you know, get that done. But is just Bellinger uh, alone owning the second half? No, no, it's not. What, what, it, what is owning? I, I saw, I think Sean said something like Bellinger, J.D. JD Martinez, uh, another bullpen arm. What would you consider owning the second half? Or I, I, f- I feel like you uh, need Bellinger or uh, – similar quality hitter and you have to really shore up the bullpen yeah i think like too much more beyond that just doesn't seem realistic to me that sounds like a lot i'd like to see it but i think if you you know you've shored up the rotation hopefully replaced stroman you have nice depth there you've made some small moves to sort of round out your depth and stuff like that but you still need that big hitter and you need real i think genuine bullpen help which is again another instance of Jed saying stuff that he still needs to go and do. He's done that before. Brendan is not a big fan of those instances. Yeah, Brendan does but, not like Jed talking. Well, about I mean, media. at the convention, it's one of those things where Jed is like, we need bullpen help. You saw that last year, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, all right, well, yeah. Yeah. You, you then have to go and do that because otherwise we we're going to go and look back and be like, you just said this bullpen was bad. Yeah. So, like, yeah. come on. I would say that obviously Bellinger is the big piece, but I'm also waiting to see if – how, how they go about the pitching. Will they trade for a starter to enter that rotation? Or will they add to the bullpen and roll with Jordan Wicks slash Hayden Wisniewski as your fifth, your fifth starter? Like the competition between that, right? I think that because I don't know what their plan with Christopher Morell is right now, I think that that is possible that they could make a trade for a starting pitcher that's controllable just based off – the quotes that we talked about the other day about Morell and his the like they they walked back on it basically saying that we think he can play all over the field. Who knows if that's actually if they actually believe that or not? So you have you have that, and the fact that if you are able to trade for a controllable starting pitcher, it does make the rotation better. I think it's better than if you roll into spring training with Hayden Wisniewski slash Jordan Wicks as your fifth starter. And that's no offense to those guys. It's just they're young and unproven. If you, have, if you trade for someone that, can, that has proved to be able to give you 30 starts over a season multiple times, has multiple years of control, and with the farm depth that the Cubs have, you can, you can make a trade like that. Uh, so to me, it's Bellinger, the fa- uh, either 
trading for a starting pitcher, obviously add another bullpen arm. I said yesterday, I think they need to add at least one more. Um, I think those, to me, those are the three things. That, that's what I would like to see. If it, if, unless they sign a starting pitcher who's probably more in the, middle, in the mid-tier market because I think they're out on Montgomery and Snell. But, yeah, I think, to me, that, that, that's what it feels like that they're headed to. Yeah, I think the, I think the trade market is still, could still be a surprise for the Cubs. I mean, no one saw this Michael Bush trade coming, obviously, right. and that's, you know, it, it, it looks for, like a good trade on both sides. We'll see how it actually impacts the big league club. Uh, but no one saw that coming, and, you know, I mean, is Jose Ramirez still a possibility, right? Emmanuel Class A, like... You never know if those deals are actually going to get done or not. But um, I think they're, they're, again, like I said, there's ways for this team to improve. There's ways for this Cubs team to be, even just on paper, better than what they look like going into 2023. Um, and whether that's winning or winning the second half of the offseason or not, uh, I think we can kind of expect that, you know, Jed and Carter and those guys – like, they're really getting going. They finally got that Imanaga signing. They kind of broke that glass for making offseason additions. They did the Michael Bush trade, and now I think they, they, they know, obviously, they still have holes to fill. And when we're talking about Cody Bellinger, I think they went into this offseason knowing, like, hey, you know, Scott Boris does have a history of, of holding out a little bit, right? Like, he meets, sometimes he goes quicker in the offseason, um, but other times he goes slower, and obviously this is one of the slower ones. So I, I think they – would obviously have prepared themselves for this kind of situation. Um, and knowing that, knowing that they might have to wait a little bit to get Bellinger. Um, and I think they're comfortable with that. If they, if that's the guy they want to go get, I totally think they're comfortable waiting um, until them and Scott Boris can kind of meet at a, they can come to an agreement on terms that fit what both of them want to do. Yeah. They like the waiting part. Uh, <laughs> Cody mentioned, Cody mentioned a guy that I hadn't really, I hadn't really thought about this. You mentioned Wes Neske and Wicks, the fifth starter. I guess I just assumed Wes Neske was a reliever now. Do you think he's back in the mix for? Well, I mean, you know, I guess obviously you can. he can. I just, I kind of, I forgot about that he could start. Well, I think, well, I, I think, I think, think that Jordan Wicks would go into the go into next season as the favorite for sure. But I mean, but you don't think they'll go to Arizona and be like Wes Neske bullpen. No, I think that he have. You think he's in the mix for fifth starter I competition? He, yeah, I think he's I probably one of those it. guys that you keep keep an eye on. Semi stretched out, right? You he has stuff to Assad. work on. Assad as well. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think there's a group. Somebody obviously is going to get that first opportunity and crack at the fifth spot, or however you're lining all that up. But I think there's a handful of guys you keep fresh in that like two to three to four inning range as the spring goes on because nobody's going that deep especially at the beginning of right. spring training anyway he's got to work on some stuff obviously in terms of getting certain hitters out and executing certain pitches I think if they feel like they have addressed those things as spring goes on maybe you stretch him out and start it but I think they have a solid group of like these guys are long relievers multi-inning relievers but if we need to send them to AAA, for example, to get stretched out, they can ramp that up and do Keegan that. Keegan Thompson probably in that group, too. What did they do with Alzali last year? I'm trying to remember. Like, Were they just 100% your, he was 100% your bullpen a guy? Yeah. 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 Like, I kind of wonder if it might be better for Wesneski if they just tell him, focus on this. Focus on coming in for two innings and being this. Yeah. I th- like, I, does it change your preparation as a pitcher – for the off season and for, you know, the time you're in Arizona leading up to opening day, does it change? Do you need that mindset of I'm gonna I'm gonna dominate as a reliever? Well, no, n- I'm gonna look at know. it as I'm gonna look at it as the Cubs should keep Wisniewski more stretched out, especially for spring, because it's a lot easier to kind of shorten the volume than to build back up. Yeah, I think I think. Because I think Wisniewski has, like, we've seen the sweeper. The sweeper's awesome. We've seen him have success at a starter. And we've also seen, like, specific reasons why he didn't have that same success in 2023. Like, there are very clear things that he needed to work on that just were affecting his ability, obviously, to get lefties out and all that kind of stuff. 
if he can figure it out, similar to what Alzali figured out, and yes, Alzali did that in the bullpen as one, you know, one one maybe two inning guy. Um, but if Wisniewski can figure out how to get hitters out on both sides of the plate consistently over multiple innings, I think he still has a really good shot at being a starter in the rotation. And that's I would not well, I would not look at it as the Cubs are penciling him in as a bullpen piece right now. I because I have you know having talked to Tommy Hadovy about something similar um, previously. That that he he's the one that kind of said the the it's easier to start to shorten the volume than to build back yeah. up and so I think when they look at Wisniewski and look at what he's got and how young he is and and how they can still kind of mold him as a big leader I think they want to keep him stretched out as long as possible and then obviously if he has to go in the bullpen then you start to tinker with things but um, I, I especially going into spring I think they should keep him stretched out. Maybe give him a start or two during spring games and see what he's got, but um, I, I don't think they've ruled him out as being a starter right now. Well, and I think given the makeup of the rest of your rotation, I think you're going to have to... I think having this many guys who can potentially spot start or try and become a member of the rotation mm-hmm. or things like that, I think it's going to be especially necessary given how the rest of the rotation is built. Like, you have... An older, obviously, Kyle Hendricks, who came back very strong, but, you know, was still coming back from a pretty significant shoulder injury. Then you have Imanaga, who's going to have to adjust. Obviously, the schedule, the time between starts, things like that is different in Japan. So you have to make sure you have some landing space for him to, like, be properly adjusted, keep him healthy, things like that. And Justin Steele. Like, this is still a guy who doesn't have that much mileage on his arm. Mm. You kind of saw it I, I, broke down is a strong way to say that at the end of the year. But he was not as good at the end of the year as he was the rest of the year, like those last few starts. So you do have a rotation with a few guys who, you know, maybe going into the year, you're not thinking they're pitching every fifth day from, what is it, the end of March, right, to the beginning of October, no questions asked. Probably not going to be that way with some of those guys. And if you want to get to the playoffs and have those guys be able to start, I think keeping guys like Wisniewski available for the occasional spot start, maybe you skip someone in the rotation occasionally, go to a six man every now and again. I know they, they're not going to do that like as a general philosophy, but I think having several of those guys is, is particularly important to this group. You don't have a group of five John Lester's out there that are just going to pitch 200 innings, 32 starts, don't worry about it. You need one Brian Mattis in the middle of the season, right? This is a different rotation. You're going to need these guys. So I think keeping guys even moderately stretched out is going to be pretty important for this team. And I get what Ryan's saying about it's you know it's harder to stretch a guy out to get to that point that if you do need him. I'm just wondering if for the development of a player, if what do you discuss at that exit meeting last year, right? Like, hey, man, you are – Still this swing guy. We still see you in the rotation, as Ryan suggests, for Wes Nesky or whoever it might be. Now, Drew Smiley, I don't think you have to have that conversation. He's a veteran pitcher. But at some point, they had it with Alzali, and we're like, Mm -hmm. okay, you're not going to be a starter anymore, but we do think you can be a key piece of the bullpen. At what point do they have that conversation with, it doesn't even have to be Wes Nesky, but whoever that player might be. Maybe it's Assad. uh, At what point do you have that conversation with that young player? When is that beneficial to that player mm. as opposed to mm. the other way around? I don't know. It's a fair question. Yeah, it's a fair question. And I, I also look at it as, you know, Elsa is a little bit older. Like he's not old by any means, but mm-hmm. he's like 27 or so. He's yeah. obviously been in the system for a while. He'd been up in the majors yep. for a few seasons by that point, had some injuries, um, again, and some uh, ineffectiveness over multiple seasons, especially getting out lefty. So um, I think it was a little bit different situation, whereas you have Wisniewski, who's 24, 25, Assad's like 26, something like that, or Jordan Wicks is 24. Like those guys still have, you know, very early on in their careers. They obviously see potential in all three of them, having given them shots in the rotation the last two seasons. So um, I don't know if that conversation needs to happen now, because as Corey mentioned, you're going to need injuries are going to happen and to have, to not have completely boxed someone like Hayden Wisniewski into the bullpen mm-hmm. early on right now, having him still, even if he goes to the bullpen early in the season, injuries can happen, you know, whatever, other underperformance, and you may need him to step back up into the rotation. So not completely boxing him into a bullpen role right off the bat, I think would help and, and still allow for the opportunity that 
if it presents itself, he could return to the rotation and obviously has to perform right himself and show that he could do it. Um, but I don't think boxing him in completely as a reliever right now is the conversation you need to have with him. Yeah, our, in our conversation with Wicks, he was like, I saw him figure it out. I think I saw him yeah. figure it out at the end of last season. So maybe if he doesn't have more than like one spot start this year and he is really good in the bullpen, maybe next spring's the time where they say, don't even worry about the start. We got enough guys that we can stretch out and do that. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, I'm... I'm like been reading the chat while we've been talking about this. Uh oh, I, it's nothing. I don't even really dis necessarily disagree with a lot. A lot of people are saying it's just. I think some people need to give these guys like Hayden Wisniewski a little bit of a of a leash. I mean, last year was his first full season at the major league level, and I'm not saying he's going to be Cy Young or anything like that. Maybe we were a little too overhyped on him because his spring training was so good in his September when he first got called up in his 2022. Debut. Yeah. His debut, the immaculate inning, and all that was was like, whoa. You know, and you got you got him for Scott Efros, a guy who's last year missed the entire season because of Tommy John surgery for the Yankees. But like now we're we're at a point where it's like, okay, how do you adjust to the league who adjusted you specifically against left handed hitters? And so that's a big that's the biggest question to hit for him for me at least going into 2024 but if if he if he still can't pitch to lefties then I think we have a, a problem there but there's still plenty of upside you mentioned his age like there's there's a lot to like there uh, you know I saw people saying that we should trade him it's like hey if you can package him with someone to to bring back a starting pitcher I'm not against it but Let's be real. The value right now isn't exactly high. The only thing that there's value is the fact that he's young and there it, the stuff is good. We've seen the stuff. The stuff can be good. So, you know, I'm. I just think that perhaps let off the gas a little bit on him if you're down on him. I agree because I think he scares me as one of the guys when they talk about trade packages. He's one of the guys that scares me because he can be so nasty if he figures it out that I could see him being a really, really good pitcher moving forward. And like you said, I don't know that the value for his trade value is, is equivalent to that at the moment. We have one super chat real quick before we get to our sponsor. Uh, Justin says, personally, I'd rather spend money on a free agent like Hater than spend prospects on Class A. Thoughts, they technically have infinite money, but not prospects. How do you feel about that? Well, we kind of talked about it yesterday. I mean, I I'd rather I'd rather trade prospects for Class A than than sign Hater. Even though I was reading my guy uh, Robert Murray's article before the show, I guess like he has one like Josh Hader has one of the cleanest bills of health that if that, sure. that teams have ever seen or and something like that. A lot of like that. a long history of success. Yeah. Of and of he's best been, shape of his life when he gets a spring training. <laughs> right, as like, everyone else. Take I it off. Yeah. The best shape of my life take it off yeah. with a grain of salt, I guess. Yeah. And you know, in, in in that article, it says that big market teams are in conversation with mm -hmm. him. So I, it's it's never been that I never thought that Hater was good or bad. It's more about how I want the Cubs to like spend their money. I'd rather them spend their money on a guy who's going to impact the team every single day. And Josh Hader is not going to impact the team every single day because you can't pitch him every single day in the ninth inning. And hopefully you're not in one run games every single day. Yeah. That's a lot of money invest to a guy who's going to make, make what make play half the games, you know, like, and that's, that's like, that's a lot of games still, but it depends. Yeah. And it depends on, you know, the situation and all that. But it, again, it has nothing to do with, if he's good or bad, it has everything to do with the most value you can get. I think if you spend money on guys who can impact the roster every day, that's I think that's smarter spending and still leads to the still leads to the the way the direction that you want to go. Yeah, I, and, I mean, and obviously with Class A, you're I'm also hoping that in a trade for Class A, you're getting someone else back with him. Now again, you're going to have to send a lot of guys, right? Class A is on a really team-friendly deal because they bought out the arbitration years, and he's young. Like, I get it, but we ha they have the farm depth. They could trade some guys and still have a really good farm system. Like, that's what you're supposed yeah. to do. Yeah, I think it, 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 it's, a, I think it's, a, it's a preference thing, honestly, and without knowing what the exact price would be for Class A, like, stuff like that. 
he's younger. He's on a pretty team-friendly deal. If you did trade for him, you'd have presumably your closer for the next, I think it's like four or five years. Like Like it, it's a long time. Uh, and you know, he's 25 haters, 29. So there's like little differences. I, I think it's just a, it's just a preference thing. Typically, I have never been a fan of committing bigger money. Like the the deal for Hater is going to cost more than what you would end up paying Class A. Obviously, you'd have to send players yeah. to it'll make be, that trade. It'll be closer to what Edwin Diaz got. Yeah, probably. but like Hater is going to get some money, and I'm not typically the biggest fan of that. Committing long term, big dollars, big years to mm-hmm. relievers, it just it's risky. is not yeah. typically great business. At the same time, you know, as you said, Hader has been re- remarkably consistent throughout his career. I, like, personal preference, like, I just hate the guy. <laughs> so I just don't want to have to root for him. The Cubs need bullpen help. They need a better bullpen. I don't like Josh Hader. So, uh, like, person, personal preference, right? I'm not the one yeah. pulling the strings. That would be my personal preference. But I, I, I'm also with Cody. I think if you're going to make a trade, I would prefer it be a bigger one. I have no problem trading for a reliever. They need top-tier, high-leverage relief help. But I would prefer, if we're moving certain guys, it to be in bigger deals, getting more help for the rotation or your offense. Even if it's just like a depth piece, I I think that's more helpful if I'm the one making the trades. Because I do agree, look, they have a ton of money. Like, you got to spend it somewhere. But, yeah, I... It's going to be a lot of money for a reliever, and I don't like him. So I would make the trade if you were. Yeah. Uh, I know. once I mean, disliked I think, uh, Dennis Rodman a lot too, but yeah, no, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of in the same boat of like where the the question was the Cubs in theory or something like that have unlimited money and not unlimited prospects, but it's right. kind it, of not the technically o- true. It's kind of the yeah. other way around for me, like. As much as people don't like it, they have a budget they're working yeah. with. Yeah. Like, you can hate it as much as you want. I know the Godfather hates it. They have a budget. The baseball operations uh, department has a budget they have <laughs> to work on. They have to work with it. There's no changing it. You can't change it, so you have to work with it. And in that budget, do you want to commit $20 million a year over however many years to a closer? I don't know that I want to, but with prospects, and I was, you know, I've been on this sh- for two years. I've been talking about, like, trading prospects for good players when you can get them, right? Now, I've seen reports that the Guardians wanted Kate Horton for Emmanuel Classe, and that's, like, if I'm Jed, I'm clicking the phone like off right away. Sand, go pound well, that's yeah. like a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. absolutely, absolutely not, absolutely but no. <laughs> depending on what the actual price would be, right? Like, uh, that's probably, like, a... Okay, you want to start these conversations? Kate Horton's where it starts, right? That, that, if I'm the Guardians, I'd do the same thing. But right, um, conversation over. Yeah, but so like depending on what the prospect price would have to be for someone like Class A, like I'm not as much as I like some of the prospects they have in the system. Cody mentions the depth. We've talked about it the last two years how they've built up the depth. I'm not a prospect hoarder or anything like that. I, I more the obvious is like if you can get solid proven MLB talent when when it's available and it costs you some prospects who've never touched a major league baseball field in a game I'm not against that so again depending on what you'd have to give up for class A because guys like Kate Horton are completely off limits depending what you'd have to give up for class A I'm not opposed to giving up prospects for him whereas I'm I am opposed to giving up a lot of money for bullpen help I think you can I think you can address that in other ways without committing a ton of money when you look at the Guardians, what is the thing everyone says about them and, like, why they either – if they somehow get in the playoffs and they don't have – like, they don't go far or whatever, they always talk about the offense because it's literally Jose Ramirez and that's about it. Josh Naylor, too, all right? Like, they definitely need offense because they're a pitching factory, as we've seen over the years. Corey Kluber, Shane Bieber uh, – Class A, like they, they're really good at developing pitching, but they need offense. And the Cubs have an assortment of dudes that I just don't know where they're going to fit on this team in the future. I like James Triantos, but I don't, where is he going to play? They don't, it's like almost the same situation with him because they don't know where he's going to play in the field either. And he's been in the system for a few years. It's like the same situation with Morrell. 
you uh, Alexander Canario, unless they don't bring back Cody Bellinger, where is this guy going to play next season? DH? Okay, but then where's Morel, Morel going to play? Because you still don't know where you're going to play him based off the quotes that the front office gave us and Craig Council gave us at Cubs convention. Those, those are two guys alone that I'm like, okay, I can, I can accept moving on from those guys and probably you name some other guys too, right? I can name plenty of dudes, and then you still have good depth and with the way that this organization's been drafting and developing – over the last handful of years, I feel confident that they can replace those guys in the system in the future as well. To be able, like this, like they have an embarrassment of riches on the farm system right now, and it's just like outside of PCA and Cade Horton, and probably Owen Casey. If I really talk myself into it, I'm open to moving pretty much anyone because a lot of those guys just aren't going to be here, man. Like, where are they going to play? That's the thing. And I ain't waiting until 2026, 2027 for this team to be good again, man. I'm not. All right? So, like, this... Well, you like, will, but you don't want to. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I will, but I don't want to. But the, the thing is, is, like, the, it, you, you were a one game away from making the playoffs last year. Like, now is the time to act a little bold, Jed. Now is the time to make that trade that perhaps is one that we look back on and be like, man, that really help this team take that next step, get to the postseason, yeah. and we're talking about whoever and how they help this team have postseason success one day. Like that, they, that's the way that I look at the, the, last, the entire trade scenario. Last note I would have on this uh, is friend of the podcast, Greg Zumak, had a good thread on Twitter, I think this morning, where he was running through other options from the Guardians that – were some controllable relievers. Uh, and I think it was Jim Barista in our chat earlier mentioned uh, Sam Henches. Like, good relievers that are controllable that would help this bullpen, but that may not be as complicated as pulling off the deal for Class A. Because just on the like the specific contract, he has a contract till 2026 with a 2027 and 2028 club option for $4 million a year. That's going to that's gonna be a pricey trade. Whether we... Th- you know, Horton's crazy, but that's a really nice contract if he is a top-level closer. Yeah. ERA ballooned a little bit last year compared to the previous two years, but still, that is a really friendly contract for a 25-year-old that, in this scenario, the Cubs are handing their closer job to for the next six years yeah. for $4 million. I don't know what the club options cost, but the deal itself million. is for a year. Like, that's nothing. So I, I just mentioned that thread from Greg because perhaps there are lesser trades that help everybody. You move a bat, like you said, that you don't really have room for, that you don't really, uh, you're, you're not getting a huge return for in other deals, but you get some bullpen help. You get a guy who can slot into that bullpen for the next three, four years, you know, go through arbitration, whatever it is. And I think that benefits both teams. Sometimes maybe there's something that isn't the shoot for the moon kind of trade. Cody says an embarrassment of riches. I say there's an embarrassment of riches at Midtown Athletic Club. Four, Chicago land locations, Palatine, Northwest Suburbs, Bannockburn and North Shore, Willowbrook, the Southwest Suburbs, Midtown Athletic Club and Hotel, right in the middle of Bucktown and Lincoln Park. Remember, Midtown Palatine launched their multi-million dollar transformation of the club. Going to be complete here in early 2024. And they are offering no initiation fee right now in January at Bannockburn, Palatine, and Willowbrook locations. They've got something for everybody. Whether you're single, whether you got kids, whether you're looking to make lifestyle changes, we're ready to show up the spring training in the best shape of our lives. Midtown Chicago is the nicest fitness club I've ever walked into. And it's not even close. They've got great club features, super luxury locker rooms, amazing outdoor, indoor pools, and hot tubs. They've got everything. High-intensity interval training, yoga, boxing, cycling, and, oh, baby, do they have the tennis courts, the best tennis courts and programming in the sport. Midtown has indoor, outdoor tennis, pickleball, paddleball, USTA, professional quality all the way. So make sure you head over to midtown.com slash CHGO, the four most important letters in the alphabet. Find out more to tour the Midtown Athletic Club nearest you. Uh, Jake mentioned Matt Shaw as well. So I would put Matt Shaw with Kate, with Owen Casey, Horton, and PCA as my, you know, the guys that I would like to not move. 
All right. And I mentioned Shaw because one day I'm going to be betting on him to win Rookie of the Year on Circus Sportsbook. All right. <laughs> good point. Yeah. You sure. like that, there Luke? Go. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> good segue. <laughs> one reason why I like uh, Circus Sportsbook is – they got tight money line splits. Games will strive to be a minus 110 split on the Circus Sports menu, unlike other sports books, which may use minus 115 or minus 120 splits. Circus Sports keeps as little money as possible on large market bets, especially compared to other books. Another reason that I like them is they don't limit players based on their winnings. Every player has the same limits, unlike other books who do limit winning players. And that's why they actually encourage bettors to download and explore other sports betting apps available just to compare the lines and see how much they might take away from them if they're, you know, on a heater. We've all gone on our heaters. I'm currently not on a heater, and I'm not bothered by it at all, but, you know, we're going to get back there one day. Uh, and then finally, the customer service is the best because I hate chatbots. Uh. Circus sports, they're like, chatbots? What, what, what are those? Because they have their own people at the Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas at the Circa Sportsbook, who, uh, who basically you talk to anytime you have any issues. Uh, all aspects of the app are being run by that team uh, that runs the main Circa Sportsbook at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, like I said. So download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circasportscom slash Illinois-app to sign up today. Also be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER, text GAMB to 833-234, or visit areyoureallywinning.com. To wrap up what we were talking about in the first segment, uh, Sarah put out a poll. Sarah running the ones and twos today. We asked, are the Cubs ready to own the second half of the offseason and some positivity out of our live viewing audience? More than 70%, is that right? 77% 77% say yes. I like the positivity. Wow. Uh, speaking Rare of positivity. Now let's Rare end, that, let's end that positivity and talk about the disrespect that continues for Nico Horner. <laughs> let's get negative. Yesterday I mentioned that MLB <laughs> Network put out their top 10 voted on by the fans second baseman in Major League Baseball. Nico was left off the list. Obviously, those fans are idiots. <laughs> So then I said, okay, now let's wait and see yeah. what, what the talking heads at MLB Network say. What are the experts going to say on this? And Nico made the list, but he was number 10. Is that right? Number 10. Number 10. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And, and I think a lot of people on Twitter mentioned this. Ozzy Albies is off this list. Yeah, I think that, that's so even that, more that was my first anything. reaction. We yeah. can get into Nico being 10th, which is <laughs> wrong, like objectively or subjectively. It's just wrong. Yeah. The The first thing when I looked at this, I was like, is Ozzy Albies dead? Did I miss that? <laughs> like that, that is a crazy, <laughs> yeah. like, omission. Yeah. De debating the top 10 and the order and everything, but Ozzy Albies isn't even on the list. It means we're going to have to call either please Zach or, or Sierra Santos next week to get him on the show. Brendan wants like uh, one of them has to Brendan come on. Is, Brendan wants now, I don't know that they, phone number. Right, I don't yeah. know that they voted on this, yeah. but right. I want to know who did so that he can, you know, whoever yeah. it might be, they can go yeah. bonk him on Brendan that. Brendan thinks it's uh, because <laughs> they're big supporters of Rawlings. But, I, I mean, I don't. He's yeah. always got a glove you know. conspiracy theory. Yeah, it's always you know, it's a always, glove conspiracy. always comes down to glove. What's the glove he loves? The Brendan's he, glove? He, he Brendan's an A2000. He's an A2000 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. guy. And he goes to bed with it every night. Wilson, and, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, Multiples. tucks it under the covers. Yeah. Says yeah. It reads it a good night. So, I, just crazy. The weirdest part <laughs> about that is that Nico fits the bill to be on those lists, like, really, no matter what you're kind of looking at. I mean, obviously, if you're looking at war, he's, what, third? Out of second base. That's what like I that, said yeah. yesterday. Like, how could you be third in so, all of base? But top also, three and more. but also, like, even out of second baseman, he was like the fourth in hits. He was a Gold Glove finalist. Like, so even if you he were won looking, won the Gold Glove. Won yeah. the Gold Glove. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of Dansby. Yeah, Dansby so, also won the Gold Glove. No, no, no. no <laughs> I switching positions. So it's like even if you were looking at not War or things like yeah. that, that maybe the the Shredder with Brian Kenny is uh, looking at, although Tanya says Brian Kenny didn't have him in the top 10 either, which, again, I just don't understand. If you're just looking at war, I'm he's any of in the books. top no, five. I'm not buying his books but, anymore. But I was so confused because I'm like, even if you're looking at, like, hits and right. that he was a gold glover or stuff like that, Only like, power, he's in there. Only power, could you say. I, right? And you're looking at some of the names on the list. You're like, come on now, really? Total well, disrespect. The, the thing I look at is it's kind of like, 
they're talking about right now, right? And I feel like some of these guys are getting ranked based on obvious potential, right? Like a lot of these guys are good players and could I think have their top four was okay. Yeah, but like a lot of these people are good players. Could the have band top four or five was okay. Yeah, they could have good successful MLB careers, but like the 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 list was top 10 second baseman right now. Correct. So what are we going off of based on what they've done up to now, right? So I I think looking at it as like, hey, this guy could be really good this year. This guy's got this great potential. If you're talking about right now, I think Nico Horner needs to be above some of these other names. I think I yeah. think he earned that based on what he was able to do last season. If and you're if, making a list of richest people you know, I'm not on the list. But if you're make maybe <laughs> if I win Mega Millions, yeah. okay, fine, I'm on the list. Your potential now, right? is there. Yeah, my yeah. potential's there to win the Mega Millions <laughs> yeah, tonight. Get out of here. I very. I weird. just don't know how. Do, how but how okay. is he below this guy from for Oakland? real though? Do they do this? To get us to talk about it, yes. Because I'm looking Probably. at that, and again, you, think you they can purposely left off Nico Horner to have our podcast. No, I'm talking talk about, about oh. the the fan, the fans. We can't control. I, no. you know, that that's an audience obviously, poll. So look who at the knows? Chat. But but if we're talking <laughs> about true. the talking head ones, <laughs> no offense, obviously leaving off Ozzy Albies feels like something you do intentionally to farm engagement, yeah. right? I guess. Probably. Uh, it, because otherwise, what are we doing here? They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're not putting him in the top 10. They're putting guys who had 400 plate appearances in there. There's like multiple guys who didn't even play a full season in that list. Like, that's crazy. Now, give them respect in right field. They did put Say on there. And, and honestly, if I'm making a list, I would have Say a lower on the right fielder list than I would have Nico on the second base list. Yeah, right? I mean, like, the fact that he's higher than Adolis Garcia after the year that he that's had. That's tough. That's pretty, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, but, so, say his last two months really the, tipped those the scales in his favor. Months, yeah, for sure. But, I mean, to see him right below all those names, mm. I mean, I think there's a reason. I, I know me and Corey especially have basically stand this guy for the last two years. I do think he has the potential to – to be like that, to for for the entire league to believe that he is a top six right fielder, pretty good names on that list. But you know what I say, he's top six right now. Personally, like take my dumb Cubs bias away, probably not. But I definitely think that he is primed to have a a, a huge season um, if he can stay on the field. Yeah, he's I on mean, the list for sure. The one yeah. thing top that six? like. I, I believe yeah. he can get there, but I do agree. Like, I mean, even if you're just looking at some of the things, like him being behind Adelise Garcia, like if we're talking about like where they are right now, just doesn't oh. really make a lot of sense. The I last mean, thing he had you a, remember he had about a, one a, guy a, was he was a superhero in the postseason, and yeah. the other was the other guy dropping the ball. Right. Well, <laughs> no offense. You know how I feel about that. But, yeah, uh, yeah it very, very strange. The, the disappointing thing, and I think you kind of see it in the chat, it's disappointing that the network of the league – has the reputation that it does. That that's my takeaway from this. Like you're, I'm reading our live YouTube chat right now. So many people, MLB Network doesn't know ball. Those guys are idiots. They're talking heads, isn't that? That's yeah. disappointing. You would like you would like the main one of the main vehicles of the league to be promoting the league properly, like not having conversations where everybody thinks they're stupid. That's kind well, of I a bummer. Know who voted on it? Because I like I like a lot of the on air people. At MLB Network. I think there's a lot of smart people on MLB Network. A lot of entertaining people on MLB Network. But who made that list? Is it a you, social media person? Need, it might you, be. You're going to have to reach out to Pleasak and, and now, get to the bottom have to of get, it. We are going to have to get to the I, bottom of it. <laughs> the, the one show at MLB Network that I like is the one with Sierra Santos, Ryan Dempster, and Kevin Millar. That's, that's, all, that's all I got. So was that... What is that, that intentional that talk? High heat? Intentional, intentional talk. talk. Yeah. Intentional talk. No, high it, and, heat is and the one with Russo, that, which yeah, is like yeah, the right, worst right, thing right. on planet Earth. Yeah, I agree. High you're heat right, is right, the right. worst one. I mix them up. I mix but them up. But intentional talk, the reason I like it is they do interviews with guys on the field, and like you they see a little bit more personality, and it's not just so dry and everyone talking about stupid stats that even I don't understand. Like, But a lot of like, you know, MLB Tonight – it's yeah, I could go without. But if they just did intentional talk all day, I'd watch it. So, all right, <laughs> enough MLB Network. Mm -hmm. 
Real quick, what did you think? Uh, we haven't talked to you about the Cubs convention yet. What do you think about Imanaga showing up? I thought you were going to ask about Michigan winning the national title. No, nah, that's old news. Imanaga Saying showing Cubs up. Go. Go. What a Black vibe M's. he was, huh? Black M's. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I was loving that whole thing. Um, I loved his press conference. I loved the vibes at CubsCon. It was good. As I said, it's it's to me, you know, the whole thing was like, it's got to just be what Jed said. You have to be in like the fourth or fifth inning. I... My thing with CubsCon was it's always fun to see the players. Pat Hughes is there, et cetera, et cetera. I need, I need to remind myself, like, don't, don't get sucked in by them in this moment. They're, they have not done enough yet. When we're celebrating and here comes Kerry Wood and Aramis Ramirez, that is pandering to, like, us specifically. They know what they're doing. I had to remind myself, like, okay, it's a lot of fun, but Jed isn't done yet. So, like, let's not get, like, yeah, ready for the season, all that other stuff. This is fun, but hold on. Yeah. Hold on. He's got work, what I he's got work to do. Yeah. And I was suckered in by Kerry Wood and Aramis Ramirez. They know what they're doing. It works. But made you forget about Sammy. Go get Cody there. Bellinger and some bullpen help, and <laughs> then we can all be very excited again. All right, uh, Ryan, tell us about game time because I know that's – like if you're looking for tickets here in 2024, where else are you going to go? <laughs> Nowhere else but game time. That's right. There's no reason to use anywhere else but game time. Um, you know, I've talked about it. Concerts, gone to concerts through game time, gone to different athletic events through game time, even Bulls games. T-Swift tickets. You know, I, I'm sure, you know, I was thinking about it, and, like, I would bet the people that went – to the Ring of Honor game last Friday, as oh. bad as it was, probably didn't feel as bad if they used game time. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like it would still have felt bad, but they're like, you know what? At least I got my great deals with game time. Right. This game. That's, um, Thelma was like, well, at least I got a good deal on these tickets, but. but through game time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you shouldn't have to or worry moment. when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Um, you know, if you're looking, if you're on YouTube right now, you can see this. If you're not, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, you should go check out Game Time. But um, Sarah's on the one and twos and has the Game Time app up on the show. Um, there's great things if you're looking at Game Time and going on the app experience. They got last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. You get the views from all seats in the venue. So if you don't know exactly where you're sitting, if you're looking at Cubs tickets later on this season, you don't know where exactly in the ballpark you'll be sitting, you can actually get a view from game time. It's also got the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation, protection, job loss protection, and all that good stuff. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section of game time and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings and the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code CHGO for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHGO for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Our partner Ray Chevrolet is ringing in the new year with their best offers all month long. Make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 and Fox Lake to join in on the savings and start your Ray resolution. As one of the top selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, you're always able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. Right now, they're trying to make room for inbound 2024 models, so all their current inventory must go plus you can find the perfect tailgate vehicle at ray chevy because they have over 100 new silverados available with pricing starting at 19,495 that's 19,495 or take up the ten thousand dollars off a new 2023 silverado and to top it all off they're pricing over 125 vehicles under 20 grand seriously guys 
Can you get pricing more affordable than that? The answer is no. Mention CHGO when scheduling your oil change at Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake. Start your new year off right. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com to start your Ray resolution. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. Uh, Barb says I've been very crabby. Maybe I'm just tired because Alex says that I've had four and a half hours of sleep of the past week. So that's where we're at in yes. the chat today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dubs also, he <laughs> said he's convinced the people who did boo at the, at the Bulls yeah. game didn't use game time. Obviously. It makes sense because if, you, if yeah. you use game time, you have nothing to no. boo about. You're, you're that's just, right. You're so happy. And you're smart. Actual <laughs> facts. <laughs> you're smart and you got, nothing, you got nothing to complain about at a game like that if you use game time. So <laughs> Mike Dubs, always on the money with his, with his <laughs> ideas. Uh, we mentioned Cubs convention. I saw that uh, PCA was asked about Cody Bellinger. And what was the quote? Do we have that quote, Sarah? He was talking about, uh, I want him to come back. I just like him as a human being and as a teammate. I'm here to win. And if Cody Bellinger is going to do that, and help make that happen, then he should be here. That's how I feel about it. It doesn't affect what I do. I still go to the complex every day, work out, hit. I have my schedule, and he has his. It's a good approach for a young guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it definitely yeah. would be a bad look if he was like, "Get him out of here! This is my we, job to take." We don't him need him. Field. We yeah, don't need we him. Don't After need Dansby him. was like, "We need to uh, get Cody Bellinger." Well, back. there's a the thing is like when we're talking to Pete Carr Armstrong about that. The question was like, "Is his free agency in the back of your mind?" And yeah. you know, he could have just been like, "No, no, no, I'm not thinking about it. I'm just doing my own thing." Okay, great. He went on record to say, "I want him to come back." Yeah. I think that shows um, not only the kind of person Pete Carr Armstrong is. But also just the kind of competitor he is as as a team, team wise, right? Like he's gonna go out and compete for a job. He's gonna do his best to, to win it. But whatever he's gonna make the team better and get the team um, to the playoffs, to win the World Series, whatever. Um, it seems like he's that. That's all he's really care. That's his number one concern, right? Is how can this team be as good as it can possibly be? So I think, yeah, he he wasn't gonna say no. I don't want Cody Bellinger back. But he didn't have to say it the other way either. So I think that's. That just kind of shows you the kind of teammate, person, competitor that um, PCA is. Rich uh, says PCA is already hard at work at the complex in Arizona. Good to hear. There's a picture of him and someone else looking at an iPad or whatever. I think it's one of Rich's uh, pictures. Brennan, that, yeah. him and that I think Davis. Greg Huss put it. Yeah, it's him and Brennan, Brennan Davis. It was like what it, he, uh, Greg Huss, our friend, had <laughs> like he said like what are uh, PCA and Brandon Davis looking at on this iPad? Wrong answers only. Yeah. And I quote tweeted, I'm like, uh, yeah, they're watching I'm like, they're podcast. Wa- I was like, they're yeah. watching today's CHGO Cubs podcast, except that's the right answer. Yeah, that's so, the right answer. Go. So when I was looking at, uh, just speaking of Rich, uh, Beisterf- is it Beisterfield? Beisterfield. 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 Rich. Beisterfield. But he's got some photos Beisterfield. out there from the uh, Cubs complex today. And a lot of guys are there early, mm-hmm. including the aforementioned Matt Shaw. Getting some reps Chazzy. in out in Arizona At today. Third base, potentially. Like BJ Murray's there, James Triantos, et cetera, et cetera. So guys are putting in the work. They're getting ready. Speaking of those guys, so my question for you and the live YouTube chat was this Bush, PCA, Horton, Wicks, which young guy or prospect will have the biggest impact on the 2024 Chicago Cubs? Positive impact. I'll go with PCA, not only because Alex is at, the in the chat one. asking me to say something positive about him, but be, to reaffirm that I am a PCA believer because a lot of people in the chat, not outside of Alex, think that I'm not just because I've said that, you know, if you want to move him in a trade, I'm open to it. Depends on who it is, of course. But I do think that PCA will, you know, I, I think he could be in the rookie of the year chase this year. Uh, I, I, I honestly believe that. I think he could settle in in center field after maybe a month, month and a half in Iowa, get some more at-bats in there and come up and be, and be able to make an immediate impact. The whole question with him, obviously, is is he going to hit? All we have is 14 at-bats to really say yes or no. He looked a little overmatched, but I believe in Dustin Kelly and what he's been having him do this offseason. I have no idea what any of that is, but as a Dustin Kelly guy, I believe it's the right things, okay? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that PCA, for sure, if he's, if he's here – he, he's going to bring gold glove defense in center field, and I think he will hit eventually. And I think that his not, – not only just from stats and player side, I think his personality will be great here. 
Fans will love him, and I think he could provide that spark that this team could need. You know, not necessarily in the middle of the year, but you know, early on, but like after April, to you know, kind of make a difference. I, I, I genuinely believe that. So, I think he's the easy one to to choose. I, I, there's, I think there's other guys as well, but he's the one that I think is going to get the biggest opportunity right yeah. away. And while I don't disagree with you, I I do think that Cody Bellinger and his decision does have a pretty big impact Huge. on what PCA does. And that's especially true if the first baseman they just got is who they think he can be at this level and takes over that job. Because then you have a big decision to make as far as center field and first base with the, that group of players. I think I think what Cody Bellinger does, again, I don't disagree with you that PCA can have that impact. I think what Cody Bellinger does could also have a different impact on – the opportunities that PCA could get That's this fair. year. And, and and we've talked about that, I feel like, a ton this offseason. Because yeah. the way I see it, and this is with Cody Bellinger re-signing, I think he's going to start opening day in center field, and Michael Bush will be at first base. But come May, yeah, mid-May, June or whatever, it, but somewhere, yeah. <laughs> somewhere between May and June, PCA, I believe, will probably be here. And I think they will put him in center field, and then they will move – Bellinger to first and put Bush as your DH, like platoon DH. And, you know, they'll, you know, move guys around and stuff. Get, it, what The good thing about it is it gives Craig Council opportunities to give guys rest, something that I felt like this team really needed last year, but they didn't because they didn't have the depth. And obviously injuries happen and stuff like that. So, I, you know, as, as Jed says, you know, baseball happens or whoever, the baseball guys say that, right? So – I think it just it, – you'll be able to see the depth that this team has once PCA comes up and you're still getting production out of Bellinger and Bush and all that. But for sure, like, I could see his call-up, you know, Bellinger, it, that could affect things. But I think it is very important that, and that the fact that he can play corner outfield too along with first base really just – to me, I don't feel like Bellinger is going to be the reason PCA is blocked or anything like that. I, I would argue I think it helps PCA. I think having the flexibility there, center, first, yeah. DH, et cetera, I think that allows Craig Council to provide him with a, a softer landing if it's necessary. That, that, that would be my opinion. I think it helps him. I think what you don't want if you're PCA, oddly enough, is center field is just yours, and if yeah. you fail, then the position Senior fails. Swing. Then it's up on Mike. Then it's up to Mike Talkman to – continue what he was doing last year. I think that's a worse spot for him because I think that's a lot more pressure uh, put on him. I think he'll succeed either way, but I, I don't think it blocks him at all. I think it's helpful. My answer to the question, I'm, I I would go, I don't know if you guys were going to say it, but I would take Michael Bush. Yeah, I just think they, they made the trade for a reason, and we'll see what happens. And it everybody had, I think, different opinions when the trade first happened, but the amount of... First of all, he's going to get the opportunity. He's That's hit at every level outside of 20 games, I think, at the major league level. And I am I was rather intrigued when the trade first happened. There were a lot of analysts and prospect guys and things like that that were sort of rejoicing that he was not with the Dodgers anymore because he would actually get a chance to play. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean it's going to work. It doesn't mean that it's a guarantee. But... I'm rather intrigued. If they give him the opportunity to hit, I think he'll do it. Back with Dustin Kelly, we've seen the work that he can do. Get him an opportunity. It's going to be a pretty low-pressure situation. He should get the plate appearances to make the adjustments and find success like he has in other levels. And I, I think if he can do that, if he can hit, whether he finds a defensive position or not or he's DHing most of the time, that would be a massive thing for this team, and that's why I think that would be my answer. Yeah. There's there's a lot of players who have the potential to come up, especially pitchers, and maybe make an impact in the bullpen or spot starts, things like that. But I think it's set up for Michael Bush. If he can hit at this level, it's set up for him to make a, a yeah. really big impact on this team. Yeah, the opportunity is wide open for him there. Um, I think my pick would be Jordan Wicks. To, to differ from those I two didn't guys. think anybody was going to take him, and I think he's the most proven. I think Yeah, I mean, he had uh, – and, you know, we talked about Wisniewski. He had that great first month in 2022 and didn't have the same success uh, 
in 2023 that he did. Um, Wicks in the same way had a great month in, in the big leagues. I know his last start um, in Milwaukee was obviously not what you wanted it to be, but um, he made seven starts. I think he had a 4-4-1 ERA. Um, he had that really eye-opening MLB debut in Pittsburgh. Like he had a solid first month in the big leagues, and um, you know it's up to him to continue that. But I, I do think the things he does, uh, they work well against big league pitching uh, or big league hitting. I think he, you know, he's kind of got that mentality. He, when we talked to him, he was talking about the different sounding boards he has, like including someone like Cliff Lee, you know, outside the organization, but someone with a lot of success at the big league level. Um, no, I think he's, he's, he's definitely got a real shot at a rotation spot. It would be, I wouldn't say it'd be a surprise to see him starting the season in Triple A, um, but it's definitely a possibility, and. Um, but I do think he's got a real shot to start the season on the opening day roster in that rotation and provide, uh, you know, provide some very quality innings throughout the season. Um, you know, I don't look at him as he's a future ace of the staff, but I do think he could be a very good, solid, middle of the, middle of the rotation uh, starting pitcher for him. So uh, whether that happens this year or not, I do think he's going to be someone that – for a large part of the season, will be providing, or will be producing for this club when they need him to. I think he's, I think he's got a shot at doing that. Uh, potentially even on opening day, well, not on opening day, but like in you know starting the season on the opening day roster um, and going from there. I think Wick Scott, I think he's got good potential to be impactful people, for this people team. People are saying it in the chat, but I do think, and I, I just took him. Maybe you guys were going to. I think I should get bonus points for my answer because what you have to be imagining is the vibes in this studio on a 90-degree July day. The Cubs have just flown the W after a 120 win, and Cody is slamming a bush light <laughs> after Michael Bush hits four homers in the same game out of the beer bat. Uh, immaculate vibes. Can Jor- I don't know if Jordan Wicks can offer that. You know, I don't well, know he if PCA is offering the but, he's got, but he's got the Jordans on. He's got Jordans on every day. And he'll wear Jordans on no, that Jordan Wicks starts. I'm rooting for them all to be great. I, that's what I was going to say. I don't know if I can pick. If, if you're forcing me to pick, I might have guessed Bush just because of the opportunity. And I don't know what PCA's early opportunity will be. I don't know that Horton's going to get the opportunity right out of the gate. And Wicks may not have the highest ceiling in that group, but he's the most proven. So I think I would have gone Wicks or Bush. I think the good news is, even if you're only counting those four names as – the prospects of impact, which I think you we probably should expand it to a bigger list than that. Like, I don't know if you want to count Morrell as a prospect still. I don't know if you want to count Wes Neske as a prospect. But the point is, the list is growing, mm-hmm. and the quality of that list seems to be growing as well. And that's a real positive sign for 2024. Well, and it, it also depends on kind of the, the impact thinking if this team is in the mix at the deadline or close to it, Kate Horton comes up, and even if he's a, a guy out of the bullpen, like we've seen them introduce a lot of those prospects, yeah. uh, that could be a pretty massive thing in locking down the division or a playoff spot. Obviously, now we're getting well ahead of our, you know, now we're making the playoffs and winning the division. Right. And when they're in the World <laughs> Series, which is right. Horton going to start game so, one or two? But <laughs> but you, you have so many guys that are knocking on the door that are waiting for that opportunity that if you do have a team that finds itself in the playoff mix, those types of players can end up playing perhaps the most significant role because they fill in some of those gaps at moments where you really need them. And we didn't see too much of that last year, which obviously would have helped them not miss the playoffs by a game. So there's a lot of contenders even beyond the obvious and guys I think that we think are going to get starting opportunities out of the gate and things like that another name and you mentioned bullpen with Kate Horton like Luke Little could he could yeah he could be something real huge like he could be that back-end guy like the setup man maybe he has the stuff to be a back-end guy right he's a lefty too which something the Cubs have like struggled to find a reliable left-handed reliever for years he he could really make an impact if and I not only if, but when he gets the opportunity, which will probably be to start the year. I, I don't see I, I see him making the opening day roster and getting a full opportunity to be, you know, that seventh, eighth inning guy. And if he's 
electric. Who knows? Maybe, maybe the Cubs have their their own closer right now. I, I don't know. But I know they ain't going to go into the next season banking on that. But maybe maybe he is going to play himself into, you know, a Julian Merriweather type role. I think he has the potential to do it. So yeah. and you, you want to talk about guys who, could, who will probably make the open A roster who can make an impact like what yeah. we're all saying. He's definitely up there. I, I, this was fun. When everybody's talking yeah. about even like Matt Shaw, you know, taking yeah. reps at you third base. Shaw and in there? and it, 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 it's, again, it's He's, one of those things. You, it, Canario, nobody it. even mentions. Canario, yeah, what if he comes up and hits a bunch before. early? What about like, Casey? What about Ben Brown? What about Down the stretch, Jackson like Ferris, guys come up, back. they hop in there, they get hot for a month, they <laughs> care, you know. Crazier things have I, happened. Listen, you mentioned Canario. I I know I keep mentioning him like he's a guy that I would trade, but it doesn't mean that I don't have any hope in him. He, he clearly could make an impact on this team. It's just I don't know where he's going to get consistent at bats. Right. And that's why I don't know. That's why I didn't mention him. I don't think I think that's why a lot of us didn't mention him. And the thing is, what sucks is like I want him to be good on this team because he was part of a major trade. But again, unless you're trading someone else, I don't see how he's going to play or unless Cody Bellinger isn't back or isn't back. If Cody Bellinger isn't back, then okay, he's he's got a spot on this roster. But man, I, I really don't want to go into that scenario where Co- Cody Bellinger isn't on this roster. So yeah. couple how many more days? Thirty six? Thirty six days? There. Seventy until opening day. Wait, what? Seventy days till opening day? Yeah, I think I saw Bleacher Nation tweet that today. Twenty seven till pitchers and catchers report. Twenty seven. D7. All right. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast. Uh, Corey and Brendan have another one coming for you tomorrow Tell at Brendan 1.30. Tell Brendan to, like, let it out. Like, I, I need I – need The hair out. out. Let it like, out. Just he, let the hair oh, out. About Nico? No. Well, uh, okay. Oh, in this particular boy, scenario, things, yes, about Nico. Oh. I've enjoyed the Brendan Miller rants the last few Corey and Brendan shows. Like, I need more of it because <laughs> I can't be the only one here who's yelling and screaming about shit, all right? I need Brendan with his, like – perfect hair and all the all, like that entire vibe that he tries to, to put off like i need him need him to yell some more yeah he rant with like the san diego sunset in the background yeah, yeah. yeah. you heard it here i'll tell him we'll see if he can get worked up about something hey, oh, usually yeah. it takes yeah, about we'll five see. minutes yeah, so we'll see. for him to get worked up about he should something do a heat map of his hair uh <laughs> thanks for checking out the chgo cubs podcast Corey and brendan tomorrow we'll see you next week until then thanks for watching and fly the w we all silly like the mayor. 